welcome back to MPC Stories. I want to start off just by saying thank you to all of you who have watched my videos and liked them and subscribed and shared them with other people. Uh, this is a much bigger response than I was anticipating right off the bat, and I know that's because of you and a huge part because of Matt Colville, who retweeted my first video. Uh, so thanks, Matt Colville. That was nice of you. If you don't know who Matt Colville is, I highly recommend checking out his videos. He has lots of great tips for beginning DMs, and he definitely helped me when I first started. Go check him out. And now that all the mushy stuff's out of the way, let's get started. This week we're going to talk about the Silva. What's a Silva? The Silva are a clan of elves, what elves specifically, that live in a forest that sits particularly close to the Feywild. The stuff slips back and forth between the two planes there all the time. It is their duty to protect the rest of the world from any of the bad Fey stuff that might slip through, but also to protect all of the beautiful Fey stuff from all of the yucky human stuff. With that said, we don't have time to go over an entire clan of NPCs, so I'm just going to tell you about four. The four that I believe your PCs are most likely to encounter should they be walking through such a forest. These are Liamar's Fern Runner, Anali Richeye, Fenarin Marshcaller, and The Arbor. We're going to start with Liamar's Fern Runner. My players affectionately call him Leo, which he is constantly correcting them on, because amongst the Silva, it is considered rude and disrespectful to shorten a name like that. Liamar's is one of the best hunters amongst the Silva. He would actually be the best if not for the Huntmaster, who is always the best hunter in the clan. This can be attributed to two things. One, he was basically raised by the hunters and has been wielding a bow as long as he is large enough to hold one. And also because he has this unrelenting determination to make his father proud of him. Everybody is proud of Liamaris. He is attractive, charming, constantly training, never breaks the rules, and he's actually set to become the youngest hunt master in the history of the clan. Every mother wants their child to grow up to be Liamaris. Every man wants to be Liamaris, and every woman wants to be with him. His father seems to be the only person he can't impress, and this is because of his mother. You see, Liamaris is actually only half Sylvan. His father met his mother, a high elf from the city, one who was out on a patrol one night and escorted her through the forest. Three years later, a toddling young elf, Liamaris, showed up at the edge of the forest with nothing but a letter explaining who he was. Feeling honor-bound to this boy, his father had no choice but to take him in. Nobody in the clan knows Liamaris' secret except for his father, Anali, and the Arbor. He doesn't look too much different than the other elves around him. His hair is a shade lighter than the lightest brown among them, and his eyes are an unusual aqua blue, but his skin holds the same natural tan, and he is no taller or shorter than any of the other elves. He carries a longbow and two short swords, when it comes to hunting, he's more of a ranged-style fighter, but if he's getting into an actual fight, he prefers to be in melee. He is young by elven standards at 147, but he carries himself with all of the confidence of someone who has been told that they are the best for their entire lives. He doesn't particularly enjoy interacting with other races. They tend to remind him of that part of himself that he knows doesn't belong with the rest of his clan. But he knows that he has a job to do, and he's always set to be the best at what he's doing. So he just does it with as little conversation as possible. He's fine with his partner, Anali Richai. Anali Richai's family have always been hunters. As long as anyone can remember, which is a long time for elves, there's always been a Richai in the hunt. So she was pretty irritated when the younger Liamaris showed up at their daily training sessions and exceeded her skill within his first few days. They became rivals, and that rivalry eventually turned into competitive friendship. And then once they were both inducted into the ranks of the hunters, they became what I call Raustiotorn, brothers in the hunt. Raustiotorn aren't just hunting partners. There's a whole ceremony and a whole oath and a little bit of magic involved that actually makes them stronger when they're working together. I 100% based this bond off of Parabatai from the Mortal Instruments series. If you haven't read these books, I recommend it. I think there's lots of cool weapons and magic stuff that is worth stealing for your game. Anali and Liamaris are on-again, off-again lovers. They find themselves too much alike to be compatible for too long. However, they remain friends by never taking their relationship too seriously. Or at least, Liamaris doesn't. 
Anali would never admit it to anybody, but her feelings for him are definitely much stronger than she would ever let on. Anali looks like a typical wood elf. She has long auburn hair that she keeps braided, brown eyes, that same kind of natural tanned skin, wears the traditional leather armor. She is average height, lean but strong, prefers a bow to a sword, and likes to keep to the trees during a fight. Anali does not like interacting with other races. She finds them beneath her and thinks that it's really boring to talk to them. She would much rather just let them wander into the Feywild and get lost forever, or eaten by a displacer beast, or a hag, or all of the other bad things that they generally try to keep in the Feywild. She loves to dish out insults, mostly in Elven, so that they can understand her, and her sort of hot-headed temper has definitely gotten her into trouble a couple times, but she prefers a fight to talking, so in the end, it all works out for her. Fenerin Marshcaller is a druid. He is not a particularly talented spellcaster, preferring to hang out with animals and commune with nature. He is short and physically unremarkable, except that the skin on his right arm is bark all the time, no matter what form he's in. He has brown braided hair, brown eyes, his skin is a little darker tan than everybody else's because he spends a lot more time out in the sun, and he is almost too skinny as all he eats are good berries. Fenerin is a middle-aged elf at 386 years old. He wears that same leather armor that pretty much everybody in the clan wears, but he does prefer bark skin if he's actually going to be in a fight. He often patrols the forest in a beast form, unless of course he has to talk to somebody. Should he interact with people, he's always really agreeable, gets along with everybody, does his job of warning them about the dangers of the Feywild, but unless they threaten the forest or any of the creatures in it, he's not going to fight them. The Arbor is as much a name as it is a title. Nobody actually remembers what his birth name is because he is over 5,000 years old. Given his age, his history is whatever the history of your world is. He never talks about himself, but he knows a lot and is willing to share that information with pretty much anybody who asks. Very little frightens or disturbs him, and it's nearly impossible to send him into a panic, as he has seen the best and the worst of all of the races throughout history. And the one thing he's learned is that the world just keeps going on. But he is tired, and he is ready to take his final rest. He is searching for a druid who he believes could take over his duties of cultivating the minds of the young and passing on his knowledge of nature and the world. He is tall and willowy, with long white hair and pale green eyes. Moss actually grows on all of his hair and on his clothes, which are just simple, undyed robes. His skin is the leathery tan of someone who has spent many years out in the sun and his hands are usually stained brown with dirt. Normally he doesn't appear to strangers or travelers in the forest, leaving that to the druids and the rangers and everybody else among the Silver tribe. The only time he will appear is if people are in dire need of help, it won't upset the natural order of things, and they make an appeal to the forest itself for aid. Most people that see him believe that he's just a spirit of the forest. He tends to tree stride around, and when a tall, willowy, moth-covered man appears from a tree, you think, holy crap, that's a forest spirit. Lots of the time people just flee in terror before he even gets the chance to help him, which is a little ridiculous because the arbor won't harm anything. And those are some of the Silva. As always, character sheets are down in the doobly-doo. I like to keep Liam Arth and Anali about equal with or one level higher than my players, Fenerin one or two levels higher just because of his age, and the Arbor is a master druid, so he's level 20. Rather than include the entire druid spell list, I'm just going to list the spells that I believe that character would have prepared on a daily basis. These shapes, I'm just going to list the three that I believe they're most likely to use at any given time. I hope you enjoyed this peek into the world of the Silva, and as always, I hope this inspired or helped you in some way. If it did, let me know by liking this video, and if you want to see more NPCs in the future, subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Twitter at NPC Stories. I'm still trying to figure out how to use it, but it'll be a fun adventure for all of us. Thank you for watching, and join me next week as we delve into the Underdark.